Hello crafty friends, welcome to another use it or lose it video. For today I'm going to be trying to use up this particular washi tape. I went through my washi tape boxes the other day and pulled out tapes that I've had for quite a while now and honestly don't think I'm ever going to use on a project. They're just not really my kind of thing, but they came in a pack with other washi tapes that were my kind of thing. So they're kind of, these ones are brown with deer on. I've got rabbits and hedgehogs. There's some leafy ones that, yeah, I probably just won't use on any of my cards or in scrapbooking. Some with words, which I'm not a fan of. So I thought what I would do is try and use as much of this as I can today. I won't bin what I don't use. I'll just add the unused washi to my stack of washi and tapes that I use for things like masking or taping down projects. So I'll use it like sticky tape. So my idea basically is to take this piece of A4 paper, cover it in washi tape, and then die cut from it. I am going to use some matte gel medium, which is a matte blue, and it's great for collaging, to help my washi tape stick because washi tape is meant to be removable and repositionable, so it doesn't have a permanent adhesive on the back. And I don't want somewhere down the line my washi tapes peeling off. I shall speed through this bit for you. Because it's literally just going to be me sticking things down on a bit of paper. Which is probably most of my videos actually, but this isn't particularly interesting sticking. So that's all the patterns stuck down once. I'm just going to repeat that and fill up the rest of the paper. If you want more ideas on how to use your washi tape in clean and simple card making, I do have a video in which I think I go through 12 different ways of using washi tape in clean and simple card making. I'll leave a link in the video description for you. So that's completely covered now. What I'm going to do is go over it with matte gel medium. This will kind of seal it all, help it stick together. You could use gesso for this, clear gesso. If you wanted, you could mix in some strips of patterned paper or book pages or any kind of junk journal elements that you've got. And I'm going to let that dry for a bit before I do the next stage. And I'm going to wash out my paintbrush because I don't want this matte gel medium to dry on that. So that's pretty much dry now and I've trimmed off the raggedy bits. So now I've got a piece of homemade patterned paper made with washi. You could use it like that, but I think I want to play with it a bit more. So I've got some white acrylic here. I don't want too much on my brayer. As always, I've squirted out far too much. Just add little bit of white paint here and there to marry everything together and push it into the background a bit. And while I've got some white paint out I'm going to put some through this stencil, patches of it here and there. I haven't really got a vision for how this is going to look in the end. I'm just playing I suppose. I'm just choosing things that I like and putting them on the top with the hopes of making something interesting that I can cut down and use on card fronts. So I've got a sponge dauber here. I'm picking up the white. I'm not overloading the sponge because I don't want it to splurge through or under the uh, stencil. 
can still see the pattern, but we're getting a little bit of extra shape. And I've put the stencil with the brickwork going in this direction so it's opposite, well it's not opposite is it, it's 90 degrees from the vertical. So we've got vertical and horizontal lines. I think that's enough stenciling. I'm going to pop this in a, one of my water pots so that it doesn't dry and I can rinse it out later. And I'm going to give this a good blast with my hairdryer while I think about what I want to do to this next. So we've brayed on some ink, we've stenciled on some ink, and now I'm going to do some heat embossing. But before I do that, I'm going to go over it with my anti-static powder sock filled with corn flour, just to make sure, as far as possible, that there's no static or sticky or greasy fingerprints on it. It doesn't really matter if I get stray embossing powder embossed on here because it's not a neat and tidy look I'm going for. But I am going to use this stamp, which is kind of a crisscross, gritty, grungy stamp. So again, it doesn't really matter if I've got excess powder. So I'll just add embossing ink to my stamp. And then stamp it again. I'm going to go 90 degrees to the pattern and just stamp it here and there. And I think gold, I'm going to use gold. I'll do half at a time so I can see what I've got. This is obviously not going to fit in my pot of gold, so I will sprinkle it on and then shake it off onto this. Right, I'm going to tidy up the mess that I've just made and heat that with my heat tool. I think the trick to heat embossing on something like washi or anything with a self-adhesive back is to make sure that your heat tool is really, really hot before you start and keep it moving. Don't hold it in one place for very long because you might start to melt the adhesive or if there's any kind of plastic involved, you might get that to melt and bubble. So make sure it's really hot and just keep wafting the hot air over the embossing until it's melted. I think this just needs one more thing done to it and that is some splattering. And for splattering, I'm gonna use these homemade metallic paints I made these during my Pigment Powder 101 video series using, I think these all at the back here are all luscious powders. And I'm just going to spatter that on top. So it's a slightly different gold, it's a more browner gold I guess than the heat embossing but that's okay because it tones in with the washi tapes. Give that a really good splattering along with everything else in my craft room and I can either leave that to dry or dry with my hair dryer again yeah. not keeping the heat in one place for too long I think I might just leave that to dry naturally and come back in a little bit so that's all dry now and lovely and shimmery what I want to do is cut some shapes from this so I've got my electronic die cutting machine plates. I've got one cutting plate, a plastic shim and the metallic shim. And I'm gonna pop that on there like that because the dies go there, that's it. I always have to think carefully before I do this, otherwise I end up putting the dies the wrong way up. I'm definitely going to cut some circles. Because the great thing about circles is that you can cut them in every, any orientation you like and you can just rotate them on your card so everything lines up if that's what you want. 
So I think we'll just go for those. I'm also going to cut these flower shapes because when I do something like this, I often create foundation pieces from the masterboard and then put something on top. But I'm thinking I might use this to create some focal embellishments like flowers. So that can go on there with maybe some larger ones. I'll also do this hexagon net. This will cut out the net as well as the hexagons. And the good thing about using a net die like this is that all the hexagons will cut in the same orientation without me having to line them up. So that will help the hexagons make sense when I put them on a card. The same with this heart one here. I will cut some solid bigger hearts as well. And I will have those lined up on my magnetic mat so that they cut in the same orientation as each other. And I will take some of these vase dies. And I'm going to leave a little bit uncut so I can uh, die cut from that maybe later. So I add this here, making sure it covers all of my dies. There's one sticking out there. And I'll use a bit of washi tape, hold it in place so it doesn't shift as I put it in the die cutting machine. And because I've got lots of different dies that are probably slightly different thicknesses, and I've got that fairly intricate flower die. I'm going to put my metal sheet on top and this will just really help all the dies cut through. And then I've got another cutting plate to go on top. So there we have our die cuts. I did run it through the machine twice just to make sure everything cut, which it did. So I'm really pleased with all of these. What I'm gonna do now is make a card for you on camera and then make some more cards off camera with whatever's left. Because if I try and do all of it, it will be an incredibly long video. And it's about to start raining, so it's going to get loud in here. So for the next part, I'm going to switch to voiceover. So it's actually stopped raining now, so I can carry on uh, doing some real-time chatting. I cut a couple of extra large flowers out of the remnants left over from the die cutting. And then I also cut a few more of the little flowers from remnants as well. Now I've got a nice bunch of double layered flowers. I haven't put any flower centers in yet because I'm thinking either Nouveau drops, in which case I don't want to smudge them with my uh, fingers, or maybe create some of my own enamel dots, but I haven't decided yet, so I'll leave that until I know where they are going on my card. My card blank is a bit of an odd size. It's five inches wide by six and a half inches tall. And I've chosen that size because this is the size of my largest stitched rectangle die. And I just put it on a card, chopped it down so that it had a little white border. For my sentiment, I've chosen this happy birthday in a capital letter font. And I'm gonna cut it from some cardstock that I'm going to cover with this dark brown washi tape. I'll just try and get the pattern matched up somehow. Just so it, you probably won't be able to see the pattern when I cut it out, but um, I don't think that's how it's meant to be. It might be, I'm not sure, but there we go. <laughs> that should be enough. And I'm going to cut, I think, two more out of cardstock so I can layer it up. So 
So there we have a happy birthday that will work well with the colours that are already in my flowers. And I'm thinking just having these flowers nestled around and about. I think I'm going to stick my happy birthday down before I go any further. So that's about a third of the way up and a third of the way in. It's sitting on that third thing there, which is pleasing. And then I'm going to cluster my flowers around it. I'm going to save that other big one for another card. Just work my way down the sizes, I think. centers I'm going to use white Nouveau drops and just put a little bit in the middle of each flower this brings some of the white from the back to the front and they should stay white I think because there's only the metallic splatters that are water reactive and I don't think they're going to color the flowers but I will also add a few extra white drops around the place just for a bit of extra sprinklage and I think that card will do very nicely right I'm going to go and have some playtime now make some more cards and then pop back with the cards that I've made right I'm back and I have made 10 more cards with the master board I created this morning so that's the one we did on camera I made two more with the flowers that I cut out. I thought I would incorporate some washi tape, undoctored as it were. So I put a strip of the brown rabbit washi tape along there and the green leafy washi tape down there. And I think that provides a nice foundation for the flowers to sit on. And for my sentiments for all the rest of these cards, I used my grungy label stamps that have got the sentiments already inside them. So I thought this would do for a get well card. And that's just a hello note card. And I do like the addition of the washi. I think it just brings in a bit more something, a bit more definition and definitely a bit more colour on this one. And works really well with the greens, obviously, in the flowers. Next, I had a play with the circles and decided to just cluster them all over here to leave all this lovely white space so this card stays clean and simple. I then put some more of that dark brown washi tape on a piece of cardstock, die cut a butterfly, die cut its shadow out of vellum, stuck it on the vellum and then added it here and I put some Nouveau drops in white to give it a body. Again, same sentiment and some extra Nouveau drops dotted around. This one needs replacing because I think I squished it with something, but once it's dry, I'll be able to carefully peel it off and just put another one in its place. So I really like that. I love this gold grid on top of the circles. I think it adds a nice little touch of sparkle. After that, I played with the hearts and decided to create some whimsical flowers and drew stems and leaves with a black pen, added my sentiments and then put some white Nouveau drops coming out the flowers as if it was, say, pollen or something. These are the two cards that I made with a hexagon net die. So the first thing I did was stick all the hexagons down to this card, straight on the card blank. I put glue on the back of the die cut while it was still in the die and then popped them through so they stayed in the right place. I then added a sentiment and Nouveau drops and I don't think it needs anything else I think it's just very simple. And then this one I used the net from the die, stuck that down in the middle, added a white and a brown washi tape leafy die cut, sentiment and more white Nouveau drops. And I did a similar thing with the heart net die. So I popped the hearts on this one and the net on this one. This one's got a butterfly. 
white nouveau drops and a sentiment and this one again i didn't think it needed anything else kept it simple with a sentiment and some nouveau drops but this i decided to do landscape instead of portrait just for a change and it's given me all this lovely white space at the side and finally i've got these two cards made with the jugs or the vases with this one i actually die cut two more vases stuck them on the back and stood them on a shelf of the brown washi that just gives this a little bit more dimension added the sentiment and then i cut some branches from more card that i'd covered in the dark brown washi and some flowers from card that i'd covered in the pinky hedgehog washi because i thought that would make fun flowers it's got a bit of texture to it because of the hedgehog pattern and then i added some mini enamel dots in yellow just to give the flowers a center with this one i actually added another vase with flowers in inside i didn't put drops on this or enamel dots because uh, i thought it would make the card too lumpy but i might just fill that in with a coloured pen or pencil or fill it in with some maybe gold Nouveau drops just to give something in the apertures there. And this one I did landscape again just for a change. Gave it a shelf of dark brown washi, put three jugs going down like that in size, added the sentiment, added the brown twigs and then a random selection of flower shapes with the yellow centers and yes all of these twigs should technically have the same style flower on them but uh, artistic license so i did manage to use one whole roll of washi with this project this was the dark brown that i cut lots of bits from the rest i am going to keep in my uh, I guess use it or lose it washi tape box which is really where I keep my unloved unwanted washi tapes that I use for masking or taping things down. I can always grab them and make another masterboard or something with them but they will get used probably as a tool rather than a decorative element. And I'm really pleasantly surprised at how the masterboard and these cards have turned out, considering the washi tapes are really not my kind of thing at all. Right, I hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you some ideas of some things you could do with the unloved washi tapes that need to be used or removed from your stash. If it has, do leave a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if there are any items in your stash that you think you should use or lose. And I'll have a rummage through my stash to see what I've got. And I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.